Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool direct drive coupler. If you already have one, great. If not, you can click on the link below or order it from AppliancePartsPros.com. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to do. This is the Whirlpool direct drive coupler. It's made up of two plastic coupler pieces and the rubber isolator piece that goes in the center. Usually what happens with this particular part is that the plastic coupler pieces, either a leg breaks off, it cracks on the motor shaft, or the center isolator piece gets old and starts to deteriorate and fall apart. And when that happens, you might see a pile of rubber chunks on the floor underneath your washer. The first thing we have to do is to remove the control panel. It's usually held in place by two screws. They're located in either the front or the rear of the control panel. Some models have trim covers that you have to lift off to gain access to the screws. And on other models, they have spring clips that you have to slip a putting knife underneath to release them. Once you have your screws out, slide the control panel forward about a half an inch and lift it back over the back of the machine. With the console out of the way, we have to go ahead and disconnect the lid switch and remove the two retaining spring clips that hold the body to the frame. With a flathead screwdriver, just pry them out. Next we have to go ahead and remove the body from the frame of the washer. So we have to lift up on the lid and grab the body right here. Put your foot against the body of the machine. Tilt the body up to a 45 degree angle and lift it off the machine. With the body off the washer, we now have access to the inside of the machine so we can do our repair. We can go ahead and take the pump off. It's held in by two clips that you can pry off with a flathead screwdriver. Once you have the clips off, just turn them 90 degrees and pull them out of the motor. and pull the pump off the shaft, swing it off to the side. If your pump comes off hard or is stuck on the shaft or shows any indications of leaking out of the bottom, you may want to go ahead and get another pump from AppliancePartsPros.com. With the pump out of the way, we can go ahead and remove the electrical connection on the motor. Just go ahead and lift the locking tab and pull it off. The motor is held in by two clips just like the pump with retaining screws with quarter inch nuts. So go ahead and take out those. Supporting the motor underneath, go ahead and release the upper motor clip. Drop the motor down a little bit. Turn the clip 90 degrees so it comes out of the motor mount. Set it aside and pull the motor out. Okay, with the motor out of the washer, go ahead and take a hammer and pry the coupler off. It may be a little tight. Once it's off, you can look at the rubber insert. This is usually what happens to the rubber part of the coupler. Uh, it gets worn out and starts to deteriorate and you get those black rubber chunks on the floor. Sometimes you'll see it where the coupler actually breaks a leg off. Okay, we also have to take off the transmission coupler side. So with a flathead screwdriver, go ahead and get behind the motor plate and pry it off the transmission shaft. Okay, here's our new coupler. If you already have one, great. If not, you can get it from AppliancePartsPros.com. And if you compare the new piece to the old piece, you'll notice that the new piece has the metal insert and the old piece does not. If you'll notice the coupler has two flats on it, just like the motor, we need to go ahead and line those up and tap the coupler onto the motor shaft. The best way to put the coupler on is with a screwdriver and a hammer. Uh, put the screwdriver inside the coupler and tap it down so it's flush with the end of the shaft. Uh, if you tap it down too far, the coupler won't fit right. So go ahead and line up the flats. And next we have to do the transmission side. All right, go ahead and line up the flats and stick it on. 
and tap it down with your screwdriver. Go ahead and line one of these cogs up with 12 o'clock. So when we slide the motor back in, it'll make it nice and easy to put on. All right, the last thing we have to do is put the rubber isolator in. So go ahead and slide it on. And line up one of these holes at 12 o'clock. So like on the other side, it'll make it easier to push on. Make sure you didn't lose any of the four grommets. If you don't have those in there, your motor won't uh, seat properly. All right, so go ahead and slide the motor back in. Drop it down a little bit so you can fit your spring clip in there. Get it in the motor mount plate. Turn it 90 degrees. Snap it down over the motor. With the upper one in, you can go ahead and reach down and put the lower one in. Snap it in place. And then put your quarter inch screws back in. And then make sure you hook back up your electrical connection. Just go ahead and push it in place. Make sure it snaps over the little clip. Last thing we have to do is put the pump back in place. Go ahead and swing it back over. Make sure that your flats on the pump and the motor line up. So when you put it back over, it slides on nice and easy. Go ahead and stick the clips into the motor, turn them 90 degrees, and push them down back over the pump. Now that we have everything reassembled, we can go ahead and put the body back on the machine and take it for a test spin. In order to put the body back onto the frame, we have to do it the exact same way that we took it off. So go ahead and lift up the lid, grab the lip of the machine, put your foot at the base, tilt it up 45 degrees, and carry it back over to the machine and put it on. When you're sliding the body back onto the frame, make sure you get the lower lip underneath the frame and then lower it down onto the four locking tabs. So just go ahead and hook the clips onto the back panel and with your flathead screwdriver, push them down into place. Reconnect the lid switch. Close up the console. All you do is rotate it forward over the front of the machine. Make sure the locking tabs lock in place. Pull it back about a half an inch and replace the screws. Now that you have the machine reassembled, you can go ahead and plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a test spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.